This is a part of Project France, a collaboration with other history YouTubers all about French history. For this video, we're going to look at a more modern history of France by talking about why France is on the Fifth Republic. It's kind of weird that a country has had that many tries of being a republic, but France is not a country that shies away from dramatic changes in government. The First Republic was, of course, when the monarchy was overthrown in the French Revolution, but it also ended in less than 12 years when Napoleon Bonaparte became an emperor. The Second Republic was even shorter, only lasting four years after the monarchy was, well, again overthrown and ended when another person named Bonaparte became Emperor of France. Napoleon III's capture in the Battle of Sedan against Prussia effectively set up a power vacuum that led to the Third Republic in 1870, which managed to last a whole 70 years until Nazi Germany took over France during World War II in the summer of 1940. So, of course, the Fourth Republic was set up after World War II once a provisional government under Charles de Gaulle settled everything down after being liberated, but only lasted 12 years before becoming the Fifth Republic, which is the current one still going on today. France wasn't invaded by a foreign country in 1958, and this was a transition between one republic to another, so how did this happen? Why did it happen? Well, it's important to distinguish what the problems were for the Fourth Republic compared to the event that would eventually trigger the change. The Fourth Republic was parliamentary in form. A prime minister ruled France. There was a French president, but all he could do was propose a prime minister. But even then, the legislature had to approve it with a vote, so it might as well have just been a purely symbolic role. Then there were also a bunch of weird stipulations. For example, only a prime minister in the Fourth Republic could bring up a vote of no confidence for anyone in his cabinet or his cabinet as a whole. So if the prime minister ever had a corrupt cabinet or a really ineffective one, you'd have to rely on the person who appointed said cabinet to call it into question. See the problem? Add to that the problems of infinite political stalemate with multiple political factions, as well as the sudden rise of decolonization, and you could describe this whole Fourth Republic as chaotic deadlock. The French Fourth Republic had a lot of structural problems and pressures, and it needed a trigger to make it fall apart. The trigger would end up being decolonization, but more specifically, the trouble in Algeria. Algeria and North Africa had been a part of the French colonial empire for well over a century, and it was considered such a part of France that the northern coastal areas were considered fully integrated into the French Republic, in that they had representatives and it was effectively seen as a part of France in a way that Alaska is to the United States. The problem was that Algeria was still a colony that was conquered by the French, so there was a native population wanting independence competing with the French population living there wanting to keep their integration with France. In late 1954, the Algerian War for Independence had begun as pro-Algerian independence organization FLN called for an uprising. As the situation in Algeria kept getting worse, the political deadlock in Paris worried a lot of French Algerians about whether the uprising could be stopped. France losing French Indochina in 1954 was quite fresh in their minds, and they didn't want the same thing to happen in Algeria. Some military officers stationed in Algeria were also worried about this and prepared for a coup. On May 13th of 1958, the French military took over administrative control of French Algeria and demanded a new government under Charles de Gaulle, believing that he would prevent the loss of Algeria. Charles de Gaulle famously led the Free French Resistance during World War II and, of course, the two-year provisional government after the war, but de Gaulle being quite a French nationalist, their assumptions were his strong leadership would end the political deadlock and prevent another Indochina in Algeria. Things got more pertinent when the Algerian Corps landed on the island of Corsica on May 24th with plans to seize Paris in another coup called Operation Corse if the government didn't accept their demands. Very worried about the coup, the government finally agreed, and on the 29th, they gave de Gaulle the powers to open a constitutional convention to reform the republic before such a coup could take place. As you can imagine, a near-military coup to end a constitution and force in a new leader was worrying for some people, even if de Gaulle was a famous war hero. After all, Philippe Patin was a famous war hero from World War I, but ended up ruling the Vichy regime, so it's happened before. Nonetheless, de Gaulle did not end up becoming a dictator and did indeed set up a new republic, the Fifth Republic. The office of president now had much more power compared to the Fourth Republic, so political deadlock would be much less of a problem. Presidents would also have seven-year terms, and of course, de Gaulle would be the first president. So whether you interpret these events as the coup in Algeria being prevented, or sort of succeeding before it really took off, it certainly eased tensions within the army. 
But what about Algeria? De Gaulle tried to slow decolonization by forming the French Federation with its overseas colonies, giving them status as countries of sorts, it's just that their foreign, economic, currency, resource, and defense policies would all be controlled by France. So not really much of a change, really, other than a name. Algeria was naturally not satisfied with this, and not much of French Africa either. In 1960, nearly all of French Africa, aside from modern-day Djibouti and Algeria, decided on full independence, even if it meant being cut off of French assistance. Hilariously, the colony of Gabon was the only one that wanted to become an overseas department of France entirely, yet the French government went, eh, we're good, and so Gabon got independence anyway. All while doing everything they could to stop the fighting in Algeria, which wasn't going to happen outside of independence. Eventually, in 1962, Algeria did indeed get full independence. It turns out not even de Gaulle could stop decolonization. But his installation of the current French Fifth Republic was very important in French history for not only setting up the modern system, but also inadvertently setting up France as a post-colonial power. Or at least on the course of being one. This set up the mentality for France wanting to assert itself more during the Cold War as well as in modern times, giving them that famous French attitude we kind of know them for today. But this is how the French Fifth Republic came to be. I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time.